Welcome to Keegan and Carlos's Scary Movie Podcast. Each week, we watch and review scary movies from our giant list of films we've curated. Each film more terrible than the last. We watch them so you don't have to. Or so that we can recommend it to you. Or so you can listen if you've seen them before. Or so that... that I don't know. I just want to watch some scary movies. And scary movies are great. Carlos. You guys should listen to them. Carlos, let's watch Again, some scary movies. Let's go watch some scary movies. Let's, let's go. go. Oh. oh, man. I have a shirt like that. Little wrinkles. Oh. Wrinkles on it. It's going to show. Every wrinkle is going to show on camera. That's all right. I'll just be wrinkly. Are you all, do you switch? I mean, I'm 35 now, so I I'm, I told you I'm I have an outfit for every episode. Oh well, I'm wearing the same shirt. You are, because I like that shirt. Thanks. Who bought you that shirt? My best oh wait, friend. hold on. I forgot we have microphones. Oh my gosh! Oh, you want to oh, calm down with that, be small boy? Yikes! Ah. <sighs> uh. hey. hey. Oh wait, we forgot. All right, all right. Turn it back on. Thanks now for... we're ready. Now we're set. We are good. The lights are on. We're ready. We're good. We're set. Thanks for tuning into our YouTube channel. Make sure you smash that subscribe button and hit the bell to get into notifications. Because now we have a YouTube channel. Man, it's so Maybe. wrinkly. Well, it's going iron it. me so much. Iron up the wrinkles. I know. This is what happens when you go straight you, from the dryer. You cannot see a single wrinkle on the camera. Nice. This is what happens when you turn 35. We're th I'm 35? You're I am 35. Old. You get wrinkly. Good. Ness. Your 35th wrinkle has finally set in. <laughs> Every year you just get an extra it. wrinkle. I'm feeling it. I'm feeling the wrinkles. Are you? Where did, the, where did this year's wrinkle come? Uh, Right there. Uh, See it? An extra crow See feet. It? Extra crow's feet. That crow's got That's some extra is. toes now. That crow's got some extra toes. Crow toes. Crow, to crow a toe and virus. <laughs> crow a toe and? Yeah. From uh, Roanoke. Roanoke. Roanoke Island. Roanoke. Roanoke. Which Speaking is of a, Roanoke. Welcome, Welcome to, to another episode, episode of King and Carlos' the Scary Movie Podcast. Cool. Thanks I'm for tuning in. Oh, I'm excited. Oh, <laughs> yeah. What? Oh, I'm excited. I thought we were done. I don't know. <laughs> Is that the end of the episode? We're good. That's it. That's, That's right. We need for today. twist. We're not actually doing an episode. <laughs> Infinity oh, pool. Speaking more of like M Night. Yeah, the servant finale we watched today. Well, you watched the other day. So I watched it is, again. This is weeks after it's already ended. Yeah, so if you haven't watched Servant, we're big Servant fans. It's M Night Shyamalan's I liked TV it. show. I won't spoil the ending, but I'll. Say yeah, I won't, I this it. one I we won't it. spoil, but it's worth watching. Some people are like, "Oh, it's an M Night TV show." Y'all are watching Servant, right? Nope, but I like M Night stuff, so yeah, y'all yeah, should watch point. it. It's it's on Apple Plus, Apple leaves TV. You, leaves you thinking. It does. You and it's just, just well, this whole season, the final it's season, well done. Yeah. every episode was one of those like, oh I my gosh. I enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it. Um, this isn't a spoiler, but the one, I think it was the Halloween episode in the final season where she like snaps. Yeah, that was, that was good. Woo. That was a good one. Yeah. Woo. It's a good one. It's a good one. We won't spoil this. That Go one watch the birds. It. The birds episode. Yeah. That was really good. Yeah. Oh God. That this whole season was great. Mm -hmm. Um, we're super pumped for today's movie because it's one that I've been wanting to watch and wanted to watch it in theaters. I have mixed I... feelings. I am excited. I'm not excited necessarily to watch it. I am. I'm excited to finally like experience this movie. I have a feeling it's going to be a one and done for me. It may be, but we'll see. Yeah. Speaking of... It's going to be well done anyways. It I know is. it's going to be well done. It so. is. Speaking of well done. Oh, here we go. I want a steak. Why do, would you do, do, relate do. that to well done? I medium, want medium or medium rare. rare. Medium, no, medium rare. Oh, I'm I a medium, medium. Rare. I like medium. I'm, I'll eat a medium, but I order it medium rare, knowing that most places will overcook it and give me medium. I'll take it. Saltgrass never does. They always do a good job. Uh, did I we like go to Saltgrass for Donna's birthday last year? Yeah, I always had a good experience. My stuff. The was steak good. was good. Mine was definitely not medium rare. It was overcooked. Saltgrass has gone downhill over the last few years, in my opinion. Not for me. It used to be I, my favorite. I literally went like did, three days ago, and it was did delicious. you get a medium steak? Yeah, I always get a medium. It was medium. It was good. And I like medium, but I ordered medium rare, and I definitely got medium. 
I got the Gordon um, Ramsay would not approve. The Pat's ribeye, mm. the big, the big boy. Big boy. How many ounces? Big boy. You would want that was the big that boy. Was just the, that was just the sixteen ounce. Well, that's if the complaint is it being overcooked, you want a ribeye to be a little more cooked. So that's maybe oh really? Why. Yeah, I didn't know that. It's because it's got more fat, and you want the fat to dissolve. And man, I love. Okay, I'm the, I'm the, the, the weirdo. I'm the weirdo. I love eating like a good tender fat off a steak because it tastes so good. I do too. If you were like, that's oh, disgusting. I'm like, like no, no, you can leave a little delicious. bit of fatty part on there. You can it leave is, a little bit of fatty it's, for me. It's like it has some. It has a lot of the buttery texture and flavors yes. and stuff to it. And so like mixing the fattiness. If it's tender, now if it's chewy fat, no, you don't get want that out a raw hunk of fat. No, get that out of here. But if it's like. So like my brisket, when I trim it, I usually don't trim a ton of fat off of it. I, I trim like it, the little fatty bits. I trim it for the shape, yeah, uh, so that it'll fit properly into my smoker because I don't have a huge smoker anymore. But you want um, some? Well, even so, the brisket thing that we did, they talk about that. On one side, you want it to be more lean, but you want mm-hmm. some fat. Oh yeah, you completely trim the fat off of one side. Yeah, because you want it just to be very lean, yeah. but you do want to keep some of that fattiness because that's where the juice is and the flavor comes mm. from and. Yeah, I'm. I'm ready for some pool did, seasons. Did you know with brisket, uh, you can they can tell the difference between if the cow is right hooved or left foot or left hooved based on like the way it picks itself up off the ground. That shoulder will be like, like the stronger, stronger one. and tougher. Oh. That makes sense. So like uh, the better brisket cuts that like chefs and restaurant tends to get are like left shoulder. And what we buy in a grocery store is right, the right shoulder, shoulder, which is a little bit worse cut. Oh, because they've sense. been working it out too much. It's mm-hmm. not. It's not as as tender. Like Interesting, wagyu. yeah. Oh man, those those the wagyu cows are treated so nice. Like they got the best lives, as they do, and then we get the best meats. Yeah, we do. Delicious. <laughs> Sorry you about can you, tell, wagyu. We are, we are not vegetarians in this house. What? <laughs> and nothing against vegetarians. Like, I have some some things against it. No, I, I don't. I, I love them. It's just more meat for me. Yeah, exactly. it's like actually they're yeah. better to keep around because then I'll, I can have I the meats. Always make sure to eat. Extra meat. That's why I got this belly. I'm eating for the vegetarians too. I'm eating for two. Always. I'm eating for two. I always am eating for two <laughs> because I want to. Speaking of eating for two, what? Uh, oh, ju- oh. <laughs> wait, hold on. It's gonna start blinking at me again. I know. Wait, it's... is this the second question, or do we set this up and then not do it? We, we set it up question. and never did yeah. it. Okay, all right. I'm making my log. <laughs> what? Was... Aaron's doing such a good job. Like. Keeping track and notes for us. I appreciate all of the work you're doing. Thanks. If only I could stop dropping f bombs. <laughs> you know. <laughs> what was the name? That's, that's the beauty of oh, editing. Oh, it's the beauty of editing. I My. Guess. I think Carlos wants Go to ahead. say something. He no, does. He finish wants, your no, he wants to do trivia. Let's finish do your trivia. sentence. That's the beauty Gosh. of editing. So I can just edit all of this out. This is we're gonna slash all of this right here. You ready? Is it my turn? Yes. Is it my turn? turn. It is it my turn? turn? Oh, great. <laughs> I love us. What was the name of the cow? Okay. Cat and Pet Cemetery. Oh, I don't remember. Um, oh. Do you remember, Aaron? It's on the tip of my brain. I, I think I can probably come up with it. Um, I, I don't remember it, so if you remember it. Five, four. Salem. Three. Creed. Church. 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 Speaking oh. of Pet Cemetery, but it's not actually Pet Was Cemetery. their name Creed or something? No. The cat's name was Creed. Um, did Which, the, Creed 3 was really good. Did the remake of Children of the Corn already come out? Yeah, did you see the Rotten Tomato score? Is it awful? It was a 0% for a good chunk of time. I think it's like 15% right now, but it was at oh, 0%. Oh, no, because I remember seeing... I didn't... First mm-hmm. of all, didn't know there was a remake until I saw a trailer, and I was like, that's next week. Yeah. And then I never saw like anything else. Well, you of found it. out why <laughs> they tried to hide I that. I wanted movie. to see it though. Zero well, percent. Maybe we'll do an episode for that one if it's that bad. God. Oh yeah, we're gonna I'd have to that. have a very strong drink. Uh, Creed, yeah. Creed was the last name of the family from the that moves into the pet cemetery house. Oh. Gotcha. So, the cat's name was Creed. No, no the family was named. Oh, it was Creed. Church. The, the Creed. Creed. I got you. I'm, I'm catching up. I'm catching up. Catch up. up. Catch up on a steak. I hate ketchup. I was defending my Stephen King cred. I got the, yeah, the cat's you got name it. wrong, you got but I got it. like a deeper cut, you know? Uh, for those who don't know, I just directed Misery. Actually, this is weeks ago, but I directed Misery at Lakeside, and Aaron was our dramaturge. So, like, anything Stephen King related, he would be able to answer the question. And I was mm-hmm. a audience member. You audience were. member number uh, 18. You were in the top 10%, the top 10% of audience members. Yeah. I was. 
I'm a good uh, listen. I'm a good audience member because I'm very reactive and very honest with my like reactions. Yeah, I have no problem laughing or like <gasps> shocks or anything like that. And it was hobbling. a great production. Your cell phone I loved didn't it. go off. My what? Uh, your cell phone, phone didn't go off. It never goes off. You didn't crinkle. It's snap, always on silent. Rappers. My phone is always on silent. I don't know what it sounds like. Other than my alarm, Same. even Amber Alerts and all that stuff, it's silence. I'll get them, but I specifically went in and made the most annoying sounds. All of my like, so that you won't ever have to so hear them. If no. if they are ever on, I will be like, oh crap, that is really annoying. That needs to and go never and again be turned off. Yeah, or like because when I'm at work, I need access to my cell phone a lot, and yeah. so if I know like the front office is going to be calling me at some point, I'll turn it all the way up yeah. so that I can hear it. And it's annoying and it's loud, and I know where it and is. You know where it is. Yeah, y'all's production was so good. Um, Thank you. I won't say the actress's name, but the, the lead just... No, um, she's great. Keanu. Keanu, Keanu Stone okay. was amazing. Yeah. Well, I didn't know if it was like, I don't want her to say her name if she's like, no, don't she's, say my name on the air. Yeah, we don't Keanu want to promote great. that actress. Yeah. No, uh, I absolutely... I Listen, I went no, up and amazing. fangirled after her. I was like, hi, I'm Carlos. I want to work with you. Let's do something together, yeah. please. Don't move. Like, stay in the area. Let's work and she's, together. I think she's, yeah, moving away, so. She said maybe not when I talked maybe to her, not. actually. Okay. She said it depends on something. But. Amazing performance Absolutely from Keanu Amazing, Stone. amazing and performance David. from David J. Wallace. Oh, my gosh. It was yeah, just a David great. David was. Yeah. Yeah. It was great. Amazing. And Shane. Speaking of great. Shane was great. Shane, yeah. Speaking of great. But David uh, just speaking of great. completely, completely blew me the away. The best performance of his acting career. In I opinion. agree. I it, it I've never seen an actor that dedicated to a role before that I've yep. worked with. That was just he the would, things that he did for that role were amazing. He was as committed to that role as Billy Zane was committed <laughs> to his role in, in Demon Knight. In Demon Knight. Yeah, Billy agreed. Zane. He's so agreed. good. So All good. right, sorry, Carlos. We're holding you up over here for you some, are. It's some, fine. Some trivia. Um, what holiday themed movie contained five interwoven stories that occur on the same block on the same night? Didn't we have this one already? Nope. Did you say it was Christmas or just holiday? Holiday themed. I'm assuming holiday means like Christmassy and not just any holiday. Because uh, like Halloween, it would have said like what Halloween themed. Because I'm thinking holiday. I'm thinking trick or treat would be. Oh, it is trick or treat? Trick or treat. Okay. Yeah. Not trick or treat. Trick, it's trick or treat. treat. We had that mix up. That was the, yeah, that was the I one was question like, where I was like, trick or treat? Like, we watched no, this movie. Not. I was like, we've not watched anything with Gene Simmons in it. What are you talking yeah. about? Trick or treat. Our treat. Yeah. But holiday, I'm, think, I'm thinking like holiday Christmas time, but holiday I get, yeah. It's a holiday. It's a holiday. Speaking a, of holiday. Halloween is in fact a holy day. It's a holiday in Cambodia. <laughs> is it? I don't know. That's a song. Speaking of songs, we are watching... Infinity, Infinity Pool. Pool. And I'm excited because I really wanted to see it in theaters because I am a huge Mia Goth fan. Mm -hmm. She's amazing. And I love anything that she's been in. And this movie looks bonkers. I feel that way about Alexander Skarsgård. See, we got it. We got yeah. Alexander Skarsgård. We got the other Skarsgård. And, and, yeah. Skarsgård. The other Skarsgård. We got Skarsgård and Goth. Um, Skarsgård and Goths. I am, I'm excited for this movie because of the director. Yep. Uh, he's not necessarily one of my favorites, um, but his dad is one of my absolute all-time favorite directors ever. Uh, David Cronenberg, yeah. who did uh, The Fly, which I think may be one of my favorite body horror, like horror films, and like okay. one of Jeff Goldblum's best performance, one of Gina Davis's best performances, mm -hmm. and I like this sort of crazy scary movie that they made together with yeah. that just has and that's that's his thing is David Cronenberg is sells actors on that performance aspect of like no matter what movie they're doing if it's some crazy videodrome movie with James Woods where videotapes and cassettes and TVs are turning into real physical flesh and bone things he sells the actors on it and it's a good performance no matter what nice yeah so to pair with Infinity Pool Oh, cool. Yeah, what are we drinking over here? We have the Infinity Cocktail. Okay. Which is bourbon, lemon juice, grapefruit juice, triple sec, and simple syrup. Ooh, it's... Okay. So okay. we're going to do a clink it and sink it. Ooh. Ooh. Um, it's bourbon-y. I, like, I it. like it. I also... I'm getting the, the... You're not as huge on grapefruit, right? No, this is delicious. What, okay. What else is it? Uh, bourbon, lemon, grapefruit, triple sec, and simple. I'm about to age myself. Like I'm it. glad I took a Prilosec before drinking this. 
Is it too citrusy for you? It's very citrusy. Yeah, I can. I can. The the acidity is gonna. I mean, it's mess got lemon up, juice, grapefruit. It's, it's delicious. I like this one. Yeah, this is this is a really good bourbon drink. The bourbon sort of adds that boldness to the citrus. Mm, you get that. Really you get that. Good. And I used makers because I love makers. I could drink this on a porch in the summer. Yeah, yeah. It's not a necessarily. Pool, a, I don't know if it's a pool, pool drink. drink. It's a it's a summer porch drink. This yeah. is a good refreshing like new 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 classification. Bourbon, rock on a rocking chair yeah. on the rocks on the rocks. Um, it's a good one. Watching Pass. the lake, yeah. approved. Ride of the eye of Grandscape to see the water stained <laughs> roofs, rooftops of everything. Yum, so dumb. So here's our synopsis of Infinity Pool. <clears throat> James and M Foster are enjoying an all-inclusive beach vacation in the fictional island of La Tolca when a fatal accident exposes the resort's perverse subculture and hedonistic tourism, reckless violence, and surreal horrors. Oh, horrors! Here we hot. go. Here we go. I don't understand why we're doing this. We barely know these people. One day, let's mix things up a bit. Hiya! You're just happy you found your fan club. I've been waiting six years for your second book. Is it coming out soon? I'm working on it. What do you do for money then? He married well, Rich. <laughs> <laughs> I actually came here looking for inspiration. Mr. James Foster, you'll have to come with us. Here, the punishment for any crime committed is death. What? What did you say? But for a significant sum, we'll build a double to send in for your execution. Double. Think of it as a gift. It's like a new skin working into place. It's for you to complete your transformation. <laughs> Show me how strong you are. It's really disgusting. You could just sit there and watch it happen. You know, James, do you worry they got the wrong man? Real? Man. That was a trippy movie. I don't know if I liked it. I didn't hate it. I didn't, it wasn't what I was expecting at all. It was just so weird. I don't and like, I know that going into Brennan Cronenberg's movies, it's freak, gonna be freaking weird, but it was weird. It's one that like made me think and like, conceptualizing yeah, I'm still thinking yeah, about yeah. it and we're having we're gonna have good conversation but I think you said it in the first part I don't think I need to watch it again no I will never watch that movie again I see I it. don't ever need it's, to see that again it's on the list with Schindler's List and all those other movies I'm like seen it once never again his previous movie I feel the same way it's uh called Possessor and it's okay. about um assassins who can enter the minds of people and like assassinate other people through like like assassin people. Assassinception? Kind of, yeah. And it's Inception just, meets Nightmare on Elm Street meets that movie. Yeah. <laughs> it's just real strange. And this was real strange. And it's just it didn't, I'm glad I watched it because like the performances were amazing. But I mean, Mia Goff in anything is I'm always gonna she's great. over her. She was great. The scene when she was on the car, like an oh, that was great. Like that was great. She plays such a maniacal, crazy person. So yeah, well. yeah, yeah. But then for she also sure. plays like just this downhearted, like she was giving me any vibes at first, which I guess that kind of turned out to be true because she was real crazy. Oh, yeah, for sure. Like Annie Wilkes? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I was actually thinking that while we were watching. I was like, she'd make a pretty good Annie Wilkes. Well, remember I said earlier, I was like, it's like Annie because she was, um, she's a, the Alex Skarsgård was a writer mm -hmm. and she was like, oh, I've read your book. When's the second one coming? Like she was 
Yeah. Being an Annie Wilkes. Of, of, uh, uh, of oh, that's what yeah. it was. I was like, I'm your number one fan. Yeah. Um, so she was giving Annie vibes for sure. Um, but this movie just took turns. I just it was weird. Wasn't expecting. I didn't. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe I'm kind of glad I didn't see it in theaters. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> It was weird and it was unexpected, but it also was really familiar. Like it reminded me of a Black Mirror episode. Or yeah, something. for sure, definitely like Black the Black Mirror. Mirror vibes. Forgot about the Black Mirror series. Yeah, they kind of. They needed to come back with those. I liked them, but they kind of started going down for some of them. I liked. Yeah, what was it the Miley Cyrus one with the, like the doll? That one was great. I liked that um, one a lot. San Junipero obviously oh, was great. One of the best uh, the Star ones. Trek episode was great. I, I like the video game one, like the VR Jabber- one. Jabberwocky was great. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, there's a lot of great. The ones, very but... first episode was weak because someone was trying to tell me I should watch it, and I started at the beginning, and it was like the pig. Skip the, the first one. That was a weird one to start Skip with. The I was first like... one. The second one is more the vibe of the whole. Ex- show. Yeah, hundred percent, hundo percent of what the rest of the shows. First one was just. It was weird. Here's social media yeah. and how we abuse it and use it and can make things. Oh, I do did like the social it. media one where you have to like upvote and the one like mm-hmm. popular woman like downvoted too much and she can't even like get a cab. Yeah, that was, that was interesting. Like your your It was a very good political statement. Mm-hmm. On like just it's society. Kind of that way now. I mean, yeah, it's true. Um Yeah. Anyway, um so this movie came out this year. It's yep. January twenty seventh, so it's pretty new. Um twenty twenty three. Twenty twenty three, yeah. Okay. Um it feels new. <laughs> just, it's got that vibe. Um, I did not find a budget anywhere for it. Since okay. it's, and that doesn't surprise me as new as it is. I mean, it's going to be in the millions of some, like 10, it's, it's, 10 yeah. million maybe. I mean, the names alone. Yeah. So, uh, but we do have budget. So we have opening and worldwide. Oh, box office? Yeah. Or not sorry, budget. box office. Box office, I, I mean, I think it's going to be pretty low. I don't think necessarily a lot of people saw it. Uh, so like six, seven million? I Six gonna, million. I was gonna guess like ten for box. Yeah, for yeah. opening weekend, two, two point five, two point five oh, million. I meant like the total. I oh well, total. total. And then I worldwide, bet. worldwide. If it was two, then I'm gonna say like yeah, ten. I'm gonna guess to five, ten. five. Oh, well. yeah. yeah, not not an amazingly impressive, but not terrible either. I mean, I mean, the critics seem to love it. Yeah, so what, what was it? Did you already look up the critic uh, score? I think I know what it was like 80 something. 87. Yeah, I don't know what the audience score is. But, so, the audience score actually actually did not surprise me at all. But what was do you it think? low? Yeah, Com- so like, compared to the probably in score, the 60s, 60%, 50%, 51. 51, yeah. Yeah, that, I mean, uh, I'm not surprised by it because this, after watching it, it felt very artsy, very... Yeah, it's a little too artsy Very for out me. there, a little too out there. So usually the, when the critics love those movies, I'm like, the audience score traditionally is yeah, a little lower for than sure. normal. I like that this country was like, oh, hey, well, we want to in- encourage tourism. Should we abolish our outdated laws? And they were like, no, we should learn how to clone people. Yeah. <laughs> we yeah. should develop a cloning <laughs> program and clone people in this Eastern European country. Uh, and do stuff that they can't do anywhere else in the world to yeah. help with our tourism program. Yeah, so that's kind of their whole shtick in this movie is they, if tourists come from America or other places, it's, so it's filmed in Croatia, Hungary. We're kind of settling that it was set in Croatia, yeah. that if you do something bad, you can pay to basically have yourself cloned, and their laws state that you have to have an execution, so they execute the clone, or was it the clone? We don't know. Yeah. And you get to live on, but you have to watch. And these rich people, there's like a group of them, they all just continue to do this. And they live like, like I think you said it, Aaron, they live like they're vampires. Like they have no yeah. care. And that's very how it's always portrayed. Like they're not going to die because they're just going to, oh, it we're in of, trouble. We'll get another clone and kill it them. It kind of almost reminded me of um, the way they treat the one guy in, oh my God, the, what was the terrible movie we watched about vampires? Uh, near dark, the, near dark. Yeah. yeah, it almost seemed like the same way they treated that kid in Near Dark. Um, was yeah. the same way they treated uh, um, Stel- uh, uh, Skarsgård. Skarsgård, yeah, Skarsgård, Skarsgård. Um, and he is looking and sounding a lot like his dad in that one, in this movie, especially this movie. Like his his voice and his accent kind of was like it sounds a lot like his dad. Yeah, does the whole. How, how many? They have multiple brothers, like him, Bill. I, there's two for sure. I know. I think there's a third one. Yeah. They don't all act, do they? I think they do. I think there's all the a brothers third brother do? acts or something. What a family! Like yeah. what a what a talented Scar- family. Scar- 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 legacy. Yeah, and it looks like Bill's coming back to do a it prequel 
for HBO. Oh, oh, it's like a miniseries? Like a miniseries, yeah. Oh, about that, like how that has a lot of potential. Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, previous, well, especially all the if Bill's it cycles. There's lots of unused stories oh, from yeah. the book that they could do. If Bill Skarsgård's in it too, I mean that's. Mm-hmm. More, just give me more Pennywise, because it could be like honestly before yeah. he was Pennywise. What did he do? And then when he became finally became Pennywise, like what did that well, monster do? Because it takes many forms. And right? some of the stories in in the book weren't even like I don't know Pennywise kind of stuff. Like there was one about a, a Air Force base, and the uh, the like black enlisted men weren't let they weren't allowed to go to the club that was on base, and they were told they could make their own. So they started made their own little like jazz club, and then it started like. Getting like the white women wanted to go there, kind of thing, and then like the white officers got jealous and like burned the club down. They had a little bit, and so it was like part of that like evil murder stuff with, mm-hmm. with Mike's parents and their them being burned victims in some of those scenes. That's what they were kind of referencing in that first it movie. They kind of had a little bit of that, yeah. The I think there's like a picture of the jazz club yeah. or something like that in the and in so the that's movies. Not necessarily yeah. like Pennywise, a clown coming to get you kind of scary. It's more like the darkness of the human heart kind of yeah, scary. Yeah, yeah. Um, um like Silent Hill. Yeah. Silent Hill. Silent Hill. But they're they're making new Silent Hill games finally. Are they really? Mm. Yeah, they had a big announcement. A there's a couple of games and then I think I don't know if it's a TV or a movie or there's something film mm-hmm. coming with Silent Hill, but yeah, they're remaking Silent Hill too. It's a, is a, was but they a, have was new the IPs, one. and then there's a new Silent Hill game coming out. There's multiple new and Silent then Hill there's IPs. some kind of like mo- like a mobile game or something. I think there's yeah, there's multiple new things coming for, from the Silent Hill universe overall, yeah. which is I'm I'm excited because I liked the Silent Hill series back when it was when it was Kojima, pre them saying f you Kojima. Yeah. Because, yeah, then it all went downhill. Yep. Speaking of Kojima, um, what was the kill count? <laughs> um, With all the good segue. Was it... We're counting all like, the clones, so... So, I'm going to say, like, 12 or 13, something like that. 13. 13? Yeah. Another movie with 13 kills. 13 ghosts? The previous movie was 13 kills that we watched. 13 kills, 13 ghosts, 13 Friday, the... the the thirteenth floor. The thirteenth floor. Thirteen comma Friday. Thirteen, going on thirty. The, I the thir- am the thirteenth warrior. Going on thirty. What, the thirteenth warrior. Thirteenth warrior. Is that the name of the movie? I don't the, know. the Antonio Banderas movie. Antonio Banderas. Sure. I don't. Oh, think Puss in Boots. Seen. Nah, it's a different one. <laughs> what in Boots? That's your one. You puss? only get you only get one one. Of you only those, get one piss. One puss. Per, oh wait, one puss. <laughs> per podcast Giggity? episode. Wait. We've already said it a bunch of times now. What are we going to do? Oh, no. Aaron, edit, edit it. Go. Edit it. Let me write where, it. Where's, our, where's our delay? Where's the, where our delay? The Hit the delay button. This is live, right? For puss? We're live on live the Live from New York. Live from the camera. <laughs> it's Liz's favorite joke that she hates. I think it's already... Sienna's favorite joke. Sienna's like, you're not live. No, Liz you is the one that says that. Or is it Liz? Liz? I mean, I think it was they both. can both say it. I think They both of, probably hate it. I think a lot of people hate that. Well, that's great. Good. I love when people hate We are not live, in fact. And we are not on the air. We are on the Wi-Fi. So wait. No, we're live. It's record, right now we're it's live. recorded right now, live. It's recorded live. This is live. live. This is live. So this everything live. you say live on the air will be on this episode. This is live. So yes. you could say Wonder Woman for president, and it would make it on the episode. It's a live recording. Unless I cut it. Unless Wonder Woman. edit it. Wonder Woman for president. I'm going to slash that. One, I'm slashing it. One, Wonder Woman for president. I'm going to forget to slash it. I'm not going to do it. Wow. <laughs> um, so this movie starred, uh, we already said, Alexander Skarsgård. Skarsgård. And our favorite, Mia Goth, who Mia just... Ghosts, this is. Mia Ghosts. Mia Ghosts. Mia Ghosts. Her acting is just... Amazing. It's oh my gosh. so good. The well, spectrum I'm a big of Mia Goth e- fan. Her, the spectrum of emotions that she shows and does so well. It's crazy. And the way she plays things, too. Like, my favorite part was the ending when, like... Everything was just very subtle when she was on the car. And yeah, when they well then when they were all on the bus together, mm. and they were just shooting the, shooting the shit, talking on the bus, and like Alexander Skarsgård was like, I don't want to go back to my regular life. Like listening to them talk about their regular lives, where he was like, No, uh, I don't think so. And you just see his see his face, and they're like, Oh yeah, this is great. Oh oh my goodness, this is you know this yeah. and this and this and this. Like just talking about their normal lives because they were done with their vacation of murder. Murdercation. Murdercation. Murder. Let's go on a murdercation. I'm good. 
to Croatia. That's not going to happen. Okay. Well, I'll I it. don't think I will ever go to Eastern Europe. Yeah, I <laughs> don't necessarily need I'm to. I'm sure it's beautiful. Okay, I'm okay. sure it's beautiful. Some of the shots, though, on that resort were beautiful. Yeah. The water, the landscape. But also, okay. I don't need to go there. I don't want to go to a resort that has barbed, wired, <laughs> chain link vents. Where they that say, has don't leave cur- the compound. Don't leave the compound, and you have a curfew. Like, you can't, or you just can't leave. I don't, that I don't feel safe. Don't leave the well, compound. But Cancun is not that extreme, but it is kind of a, like a lighter version of that. Yeah. Like, uh, you know, they get, got all kinds of warnings about like uh, if you do leave the resort and you go places, make sure your ride is someone that like you called there, like an like an Uber well, or sure. a taxi that you called. Don't get into like a random taxi. Well, I mean, they don't we want through, you to get sex We had trafficked. to get like yeah, kidnapping advisories and stuff like that. And then the resort had like a gate. It, it wasn't like chain chain link yeah or not a like barbed wire and there weren't like armed guys that we ever saw so in cozumel they had what i'll call the tourist hub and then they had a gate because they had a person that Mm -hmm. actually checked your your uh uh boarding not your boarding we went a little uh off the beaten path listen so christy and i had chris uh, our friend christy and i we had both been to cozumel before and we flat out said we get out of the touristy area that's Mm -hmm. where the good food is we made friends with the mexican and immediately said where would you go for dinner right now? Then Do tried, not take us to... He tried to sell her drugs. And true. And she said, no, I'm good. True. Uh, but also found the uh, most amazing Mexican food. Mm-hmm. A it restaurant so called freaking Ix Cool. Ix Cool. Um, the drinks were good. The, the that guacamole. S- that staircase was not OSHA approved. The staircase was not OSHA approved. <laughs> there was no handrail. And you were just like... Walk up this staircase. The like, salsa this makes me real was some of the most flavorful but spicy salsa. It was a beautiful restaurant the too. Like guacamole it very in the volcanic uh, yeah. mortar and pestle was the best guacamole uh, I've ever had. Yeah, that octopus. Whew. The, the octopus, octopus ceviche. And then oh, and then the um, the grilled octopus ceviche was, was really the best good. thing. But then the dessert, the coconut cornbread. Oh. It's oh, the so one that we good. waited an extra hour for because they forgot they brought about Mike us. and Christie's, and then you and I were like. Where's ours? It wasn't an hour, but it, it was, wasn't it was that a long, long time. But we were just wanting it so bad. Uh, and I bought those shots for us for like a ridiculous amount of money. I was like, uh, I want to get a shot of tequila for everybody without y'all knowing. He was like, uh, what about this? What about this? I was like, what's your most expensive thing? And he told me, I was like, that's it? I can buy a round of that easily. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. The pace, we got really good at peso conversion. Yes, we did. <laughs> because, well, they also had a chart too, but. Yeah. And I'm yeah, it was good. But, um, yeah, all that to say, we had to k- k- like check back in with the lady yeah. at the gate, but it wasn't barbed wire. It wasn't but also, anything. If we would have gone any further than we did off of the sidewalk where we were at, it was it would not have been a good neighborhood. Oh a well, good no, place. no. So the, uh, like, anywhere, don't wander too any, much. Any port I've been to for a cruise. <laughs> It's tourist central, and then you get, mm-hmm. like, even just a little out of it, and it's, like, nothing. Yeah. yeah even yeah. up. So the first place that we docked on our, my first cruise was Costa Maya. Mm-hmm. They flat out said, Costa Maya is not actually a town. It's a port that exists for tourists. Mm-hmm. Out of tourist season, it is a ghost town. It's nothing here. Yeah. And it, when we went for, um, we did uh, some Mayan ruins. We went to Belize. They took us out. You better Belize it. You better Belize it. But we had to, like, take a bus an hour into the area. Yeah. To get there, the minute we left the port, it was so run down. Like yeah. everything just looked terrible. So but the ruins were, were great. When I was a kid, we did Veracruz and we did like whitewater rafting in Veracruz. It was literally just us, <laughs> like this creek that was barely wide enough for a, a a boat. And we were just there was no rafting at all. There were no rapids. We were just kind of like they had people actually pouring buckets of water in so that the water could uh, keep moving. There were people like washing their clothes. Like as we oh, were going through, there nice. were like families just washing their clothes and stuff in it. And, like, is it a back? Is he he's back? back? Oh, he's over there. I see him. Okay. We have there's like a gnat or something, or maybe it's a fruit fly. I don't know. It's something. It's a something. He's just chilling. Um. So this movie was going back to the movie, yeah. <laughs> written and directed by Brandon Cronenberg, mm-hmm. which you you mentioned something else that he had done. So I looked at his Possessor. filmography and I didn't really recognize anything. Uh, I think the only other film he's directed is Possessor, right? I. He has a couple things to his names as credits. I don't think he's done much else. None of it it was things that I knew, but maybe you recognize more of it. I think he just did some short films. I don't think he did much else. Uh, Possessor, I think, was his first big film. There it is. 
Uh, but his dad is David Cronenberg, who is a brilliant filmmaker, um, but makes movies that are very similar to yeah. what Brandon has made. Yeah, Possessor's like the number one known for. Yeah. Antiviral, never heard of it. And it then, sh- are those short cool. films or is it a full? Uh, it's an hour and 48 minutes. Okay. 2012. Okay. And then please speak continuously and describe your experiences as they come to you. God. That's a short. Okay. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, I'm a huge, huge David. Okay. Huge David Cronenberg fan, but it's also his stuff is very hit or miss. That, that antiviral, I do remember this. It was one oh, do you know where. It? I don't know that I saw it, but I remember like a trailer for it. Uh, fans could buy uh, celebrity illnesses, so you could get like David Schwimmer's tuberculosis. Oh, weird! What? And it was like people injecting themselves with these diseases, so they'd have the same diseases as the. I could buy somebody's AIDS blood. Yeah, oh, that, and that a little bit sounds like a Black Mirror episode too. <laughs> yeah. That oh yeah, too. for sure. Actually, that that would make a good Black Mirror episode. Mm-hmm. People being so infatuated with people that they would buy like their diseases. Yeah. Man, yeah, people are messed up. Um, speaking of messed up, um, so I told you I had one like small fun fact. So this movie made more money in its first. Re- oh, this is a fun fact. Yeah, you gotta sing the song. Fun, fun fact with Carlos. Yeah. This movie made. Oh wait, no, not yet. That's no one. <laughs> this movie made more money in its first week than Crimes of the Future did in its entire theatrical which run. Which is David Cronenberg. Which is David Cronenberg's. Yeah. Um, the movie did not look good. It did not. But it was. It's based off of a early. It's one of his first films. So he kind of is revisiting the script of his one of his oh, first okay. films that he made. Interesting. Crimes of the Future. But yeah, I thought that was cool. They're kind of like a who did it better, their father or their son. But I mean. David's got plenty of other stuff to his name, obviously. Oh, yeah. But I also don't think David Cronenberg's necessarily made a good movie. Like a a big... Can you hear that in your headphones? The, the dog barking? Yeah. Yeah, I heard it. Just oh, like... well. That's fine. I mean, we can... If you get a second, we can close that one door. So I, I don't care. It's, it's well, you can hear it through that wall. Oh. It's that... Dogs it's... are the worst. Oh, well. We'll be fine. It'll be fine. We love dogs on this podcast. Um... But I can't like I can't think of another thing that David Cronenberg has done recently that's been really really good. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know either. Um, other fun facts. So we watched this movie on. Was it on anything? Uh, it was. I just rented it off Prime. Prime. Okay. Yeah, I rented it. But so mm-hmm. Prime only has the rated R version. So this movie originally was rated NC seventeen. Um. Mm-hmm. I don't even know that I need to see the NC-17. Even what we saw, I was I like, don't need to see it again. It's so out there that I'm like, I'm good. Yeah, and it's already graphic um, enough. It was NC-17 for some graphic violence and sexual con. Really, it was the Lots sexual content. Sexual Scar- content. Scar- Scar- After um, yeah. an unsuccessful oh. appeal for an R rating, am I allowed to say that word? Sure. No, I just. I'm- <laughs> If it's no, it's no. Uh, it's fine. After an unsuccessful appeal for an R rating, um, Neon, I guess the production company, yeah. edited the film to get the desired R rating. The uncut version was screened at Sundance. Surprise. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, while the edited version was what was released in theaters. Okay. So, yeah, some of the difference is... They, I mean, it's pretty graphic. They, Aaron pretty mentioned good. it earlier. They do show... It when Mia Goth like, basically jacks off. Yeah. Um, Alexander Skarsgård, and they show all of that. Um, there's also a lot of, during the orgy scene, they show a lot more of uh, yeah. everyone. Um, oh, including, boy. like, penetration and stuff like that. Oh, wow. They show a lot, apparently, in yeah. the NC-17. So, um, when you look at this movie on IMDb, there's the parental guide section, and everything other than mild language said severe. <laughs> Everything, gore, violence, uh, yeah. nudity, everything was just severe. <laughs> it seemed like, it oh yeah, very, yeah. Woo. Also, this is a, um, it was a movie. Skarsgård, 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 Sarsgård. Sars. Scars are guarded. Star, scars. Star. Is that a nemesis? It is a nemesis ne- reference. Nemesis. Um, nemesis. It was rumored that someone else was actually going to play the role, but it Who? passed. Who? Take a guess. Um, Not the, I mean, uh, Jeff Goldblum. Nailed it. <laughs> Robert Pattinson. Okay, he's worked with um, David Cronenberg before. 
I him and sense. Mia together would have been very interesting. I'm trying to think of them two together. Yeah, I would have liked that. I would, I'd be down. I'd be down. Also, but I still wouldn't watch the movie again. No. But it'd be weird because he has kind of bushy eyebrows. Pattinson. And she has none. She has no eyebrows. She has none. Yeah. Her eyebrows are so very blonde, blonde. Yeah. That if you just like look past it, she looks like an alien. Mm-hmm. No eyebrows. She's going for that natural look, which works for her. Confirmed Mia Goth is alien. I mean, she she's gotta be with her acting and everything. Man. Not of this nope. Not of Planet Earth. I loved the scene where she was like, Oh yeah, I'm a uh, I'm with an agency where you learn failure acting. Like, what is that? And it's like you can't she's a pro like a uh oh, what do you call them? Infomercial actor. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> like she's like, I can't cut this. Oh, with, with the this with knife. the what the am role. I going to do? Yeah, yeah, that was, a was good scene. that whole scene. It was very believable too. Her failure acting was really good. So when the movie starts, Skarsgård actually has a, a wife. Right? Yeah, it's his wife, not girlfriend. Yeah. and they're on oh, this yeah, resort. And uh, Mia Goth has her. What we'll say is husband. I don't know if we ever confirmed if that was a boyfriend or a husband. Uh, yeah, husband, I don't think it sure. mattered. They were very open anyway. So they're, too, they're too European for such Yeah, time. they were yeah. very European. This for movie their, is with, a, it's a with, swinger um, undercover movie, by the way. Yeah. It's all it is. But it's about swingers and them What they do people. on the parties. I mean, killing, I saw... Well, killing clones and people, too. Yeah. So Mia, like, clocks him and is like, I've been watching you. Um, you're the famous author. I've read your book. I've just got to know when's the second I'm one coming out. I'm your number one fan. And I'm believe me, there ain't no fan. number two. Yeah. I'm telling you, Andy vibes. Um, <laughs> and then it's like, oh, what do I have to do to convince you to come to dinner with me? And um, then they get drunk, go off the premises. They hit a person. And they're like, we've got to call the cops. We've got to call the cops. And Mia's like, no, no, we've got to get in the car. Yeah, yeah. I'm driving back. Well, well, it's going to be fine. We'll take care of it. The next morning... The police knock on the door. Because it turns out she called the cops anyways on them. Yeah. Police calls the door, she wanted takes them to him go in, through the process. and makes him go through the process where he signs. He gets cloned. They have to execute him. Okay, this little creepy kid has one missing tooth. So stabs him. Like my question is this: the clones and the people that are brought in to kill the clones and everything, can they see the bleachers in the back or no? That's all like a uh, like they're hidden. You can't see. Any I don't of that. think it's hidden, but I would imagine it's one of those like like on stage where you can't really see the audience anyway because the lights are kind or, of blinding or you. hear them or anything. Because the one scene when like all the clones were getting killed off, and then they're um, just there. I think it's an open area, but you probably can't see them. Like because it seemed like the, the clones didn't know they were there. I don't think they can see them. Yeah, maybe it's like lights. That yeah, yeah that's, that's, what that's what I'm saying. The lights like, are like like on stage. You can't like see the audience because the lights are yeah. like affecting you. Yeah, but I wondered that whenever the like the first time when the first uh, the kid killed. Yeah, because I'm like that. He, he was kid walking can out see. and he was like he can see. He's right there. Does he? Yeah, but maybe they just don't care as long as they got to kill. I mean, there's and probably it, it a level more of a spiritual yeah. spirituality thing rather yeah. than like. Like, you're killing the essence of this person. Like a ceremony. There's probably yeah. a level of, I can see, but I can't see who or what. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I know, like, I can see, like, out in the distance, like, someone's out there, but I don't know. Because he, like, he's yelling for help, so clearly he knows somebody's out there. Yeah. Uh, oh, the first A24. time. A24, making some weird... Was this A24? Oh, no, that's Neon. It was Neon. Yeah. The I last say, movie, the last movie we watched was A24. I mean, honestly, this could have been, been A24, A24 easily. Film. Yeah. Yes. Um, but that little kid stabbed him like 20 plus times. That was a lot. The blood was so red. All the blood. So yeah, very that bright. scene when he like punches his clone mm -hmm. um, and his hand Well, even when they, up. like the regular people, when they got shot and stuff, it was very bright. Yeah, the blood was like vibrant. At first I thought that's, a, that's how they were going to indicate whether somebody was a clone or not. It was like with the, yep, he's back. Uh, with back. the bright, uh, <laughs> the bright red blood and stuff. But no, everybody, everybody had it. So they have this whole dialogue. Maybe everybody was a clone. I don't know. Or were they? They had this whole monologue moment where they're like, "Yeah, we forget to we get we start to start thinking that we don't know if we're the clones or not." Mm -hmm. um, and it makes you think, like, did they kill the clone? Did they kill the real one? And yeah. Because you know, even the after the first time, he can back question to his, everything. Which is yeah, I you love question everything. Like but his wife is still there at this point, and she's like, mm -hmm. she had the most common sense of everyone. She goes, she's out. Nope, I'm out." Pack your bags. We're going to the airport. And he's like, oh, I can't find my passport. And it turns out he just freaking hid his passport. So he that... hides it under the sink. Yeah. He knew where it was because later on we see he like pulls it out. So he knew. He well, just he's wanted ready to, to stay. Go. Yeah. But, but she was like, Mia no, we got to go. her friends weren't ready to go. So. Nope. <laughs> yeah. 
and they they played with him. They made him do this like illegal drug that makes you hallucinate. But and no, that was that was a legal drug. That was illegal. It was legal. Oh, okay, I missed because that. it was. They were saying the only reason they have that is because it's part of their religious ceremony. Oh, okay, yeah, whatever. Yeah. And it's then like they a do the orgy with drugs. They have the drug, the drorgy, the drorgy, the drug orgy, and which it was, was very graphic. It was very graphic. It's all a lot of stuff. Um, there's this a lot is, going on. This movie is not for the faint of heart. No, and it is not for people with. Well, uh, yeah, after, let's talk after about the kids go to bed. Yeah, this movie is for sure after the kids go to bed. Make sure there are no children awake. Yeah, there's in a your lot that you don't want to while get to you're see. watching this. Yeah, fast forward to where Alex is finally like, I'm done, and they capture him on the bus. They go back while she's sitting. Oh, she's sitting on the front of the car with a tub of fried chicken, drinking a bottle of wine. Like she never goals. eats the chicken though. But gold. She never. She never ate that chicken. Can we have fried chicken though later? I really want fried chicken I have been now. eating so unhealthy okay, lately. Fine, fine, I fine, need fine, 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 to fine. eat a salad fine. or something. Fine. Although that salad's probably not any more unhealthy than probably fried chicken. <laughs> fried chicken salad. But afterwards, he runs off into the, the the woods and she shoots him. I don't know. How, I felt like he was too far away for that to be real. But she gets shot in the leg. There were just some like... And I get it. It comes with the genre. But just some weird, unbelievable There's things. There's suspension of disbelief that you just accept. Yeah. Um... That was one of those where I'm like, oh, I guess she just, ate. yeah, yeah. Dumb but luck. after Dumb he gets luck. after Dumb he luck. gets shot yeah. with a leg, he finds like this house with uh, two of the local kids. They take him in, and then he's basically he trips out again. He's like coming off of the drugs, and this is honestly was trippier than even the orgy because he sees the, the kid, face. and yeah, like the kid that originally stabbed his off. clone, like is trying to choke him and is tripping out dream and he like rips the rips kid's, the face, kid's face off and mia goth is underneath yeah and she's laughing or doing something like ah, and then there's scenes of him like pulling like an entire body in half and there's like the goopy he stuff pulled, yeah he pulls his own body completely in half but there's, it's not like there's no blood or anything it's just like just strands of goopy stuff between yeah. it like it's just well and, it, and then in the it real world it, i mean it really yeah, I don't know where the clones were or where the real. I'm assuming ev- by the by the way the ending was, everybody's a real person on that bus at the end. But the way they were talking yeah. and going on and stuff, but like you, you don't know. Well, and they make or him... does it matter to them? The rich at that people point, doesn't matter to that them. That was my take: is they are the real ones, but it was more about like the damage they were doing to themselves by by the act of seeing themselves die, and then they like, are and the then yeah. not having they not are having the consequences, mm-hmm. you know, and and that was. It was there about are the no damage they do yeah. themselves. If you have so okay, there's a um, I'm gonna butcher this, but it was um, I think it was a comedian was talking about this on a podcast, and I just the the only thing that stuck with me was the story, and it was if we were to go out and get a speeding ticket, the amount of money we would have to pay for that speeding ticket, it would suck. Like that would eat into our monthly income. And, like, we would have to rebudget things. We would have to take time out of our day to, like, go and get um, the defensive driving and make sure it doesn't oh, yeah. affect our insurance or anything like that. So, like, we, we try not to speed. But uh, they were the, – the friend who told them this story said they had a friend who was very, very wealthy. And they, they were like, oh, you need to slow down. You're going to get a speeding ticket. And he goes, no, that's just a f- uh, fine you pay so you can go fast. Okay. And it was just like, to them, if you have a lot of money, literally, you just go and pay off. You don't even have to go to defensive driving. You just go and pay off your ticket. And $300 to somebody it's nothing who for makes hundreds of thousands of dollars, if not more, making year, six digit it figures. doesn't matter. Yeah. But $300 to me is going to be a lot different oh, yeah. than uh, for that. Like, I'm going to have to go and rethink my budget for the rest of the month and... Absolutely. Yeah. And that's how I thought this movie was. It made me think of that story where murder is not a life sentence or a crime where you're it's it's a non punishable crime. It's they have to go be in some white robes for a little bit, watch their own death, and laugh about their own and death laugh about that it. they get to see and then be off on their merry way. And um Andrew Scar wait Skarsgård Andrew Skarsgård Alexander Al- Alexander so, sorry another a name Alexander Skarsgård's character Andrew. didn't come from money no he wasn't rich they made and, that very clear his wife is and, he married rich and we were talking about that during the movie we're like 
the things she was saying, they were laughing. The whole table was kind laughing about it. But then you look at, at Alexander Skarsgård. He's like, and it's like, take it back by it. Well, well, he's still kind of laughing and joking, but it, it seemed very like, oh, I have to be a part of this world and I can't have feelings about this. Yeah. About me not, they're making jokes about me not having money. Um, I just have to like blend in and laugh. Yeah, like I have to blend fine. in and laugh and make sure everything's okay. And this is his first instance of him actually having money and his wife gets grossed out by it yeah where it's like i saw the way you looked at your own clone dying you were uh, like i think I this is gross and yeah. it's like chill out or be there for your if you are a married couple be there for each other yeah, support each and other. talk to each other through it I, uh well then that I was know, before she just abandoned him yeah literally just country. abandons yeah. him well um, he also is the one who's like you can leave and i can just stay here yeah so i mean he, no, he did that's, that. the thing you, that's the thing you say being the being the good guy, and then the other person's like, "Oh no, I'm obviously not going to do that because I'm not going to leave you in this foreign country." Yeah, um, yeah. But like the rich people are just like. They but I think even, she was so grossed out. But it's like he had never experienced this life before. Yeah, this and the is rich his pe- first instance. The rich people even bought extra clones of mm-hmm. Alex Skarsgård to yeah. make him like beat himself up, and then he's like pissing on himself. They put a mask over it so he didn't know who it was, mm-hmm. and they pull it off, and he realizes that he's been like hitting himself. And, and he's I, disgusted with it. I think that that's that was why his turning point. I think the uh, that cop van that came through and didn't say anything to him. Yeah. The police van that comes through. That's why they were paid off. They knew what was going on. Oh yeah. They're like, oh yeah, we know what's going on. We're not going to stop you. We don't care that you have a gun in your hand. You're rich enough to to be able to do what you want in our country. Stand on this street and not not have the police uh, say anything to you. Um, yeah. Well, I think even... the common factor also, and I think this is on purpose. All of the people who were getting away with everything were very white. Oh, white and rich. Yeah. They were white and rich. Uh, whereas everybody else in the country, did, they, they weren't They're white. They're all pawns in what they want to happen. Yeah. Everything, was, they paid off the locals, everyone. Well, even like when I they went out of the... I think that's on purpose, that it's, you can only cast white people in this movie. When they went out of the compound, too, the people at the gates like, you're not supposed to leave the compound. I was like... Mm-hmm. We were just trying to have oh, fun. Look, fine. we have our card here. And they're like, okay, go ahead and come in. Just don't let it happen again. And the, o- the only person who is not white in that movie. Is his wife. She leaves. And she situation. leaves. She's like, nope. Yeah. I'm out. And maybe that maybe that's commentary on that too, where it's, yeah, I'm rich, but I'm not white. Yeah. So I can't get away with as much as you guys If she can. wasn't with them. Yeah. Then or like, in the no. past, maybe in America, she's like, even with money, I can't get away with that kind of thing. Yeah. Um. So, I it's don't just know. gross. I mean, yeah they 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 flaunt they everyone's a pawn in what they want to happen in their scenarios. Um, I relate this movie a lot to um A Clockwork Orange, where yeah. it's it's just if you are young enough and white enough in this world that they've created, you can go around and literally do anything you want to. Um, and so it's I again great commentary. I don't need to see this movie again. Um, but I, I love that we can sit here and kind of unlock the yeah, layers of the movie. It. It's really nice. Did I ever tell you about my weirdest New Year's experience? No. So tying into like people that are unnecessarily rich and me mm-hmm. just not blending in with the crowd at all. I was invited to a New Year's Eve party through a friend of a friend by a different friend. It okay. was like a movie scenario where it was like somebody was invited. Someone was told. That friend invited that friend. That friend invited and me. Was it like the chain of friends that led you there didn't even show up to it or anything? No, no, no. I went with I went with a friend that invited me, and they went okay. with a friend that invited them. Okay. And then we all went to the party together, and yeah, it was yeah. in Uptown Dallas. I'm not going to say names, yeah, but it yeah, was yeah. very wealthy people that are like producers for like Lyric Stage and all these like well known play like theaters in the okay. area, and. We had to key in, like, we let the per- person know at the bottom, like, we're here for the whatever party. He's like, let me key you in. He keyed us in, and the elevator goes up to their door, and it opens up, and then... Into it's their Into apartment. their place, yeah. yeah. Right when you get there, there's a server with a tray of champagne. You take a champagne, you walk forward a little bit. I remember it vividly. There's an ice sculpture luge thing that you pour vodka down, and it chills it as you go, and you hold your glass here, and you have very chilled vodka, so you can take vodka shots. Yeah. To the right is a picture booth. Like a very nice picture booth. Okay. To the left was where it actually opens up. So you go to the left. To the left, when you get into the main area, is the first kitchen. Because there's multiple. <laughs> the first kitchen with all the hors d'oeuvres and everything was served on edible serv- silverware. And there's this is like, our serving kitchen. This is our prepping like kitchen. Wagyu like appetizers and stuff. I was like, 
it's delicious. Oh, here's the thing. It's like, invite me to those all day. Oh, go to them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'll, oh, I forgot to say, it was Roaring Twenties themed. Okay. Um, so I wore like dark jeans and like a button up and like a, oh, no. a fedora or something like that. I was like, oh, Roaring Twenties. Every man was in its full like expensive tuxedo. Every woman was in a flapper's dress. Never have I felt These so dogs. out of place and unwealthy in my life. <laughs> <laughs> um, they had a jazz band in the main serving area. They had a second jazz, smaller jazz combo out on the balcony, which okay. is a large balcony. They had another one upstairs on the second floor. And then they had a DJ as well and a dance floor on the other side, God. as well as the second kitchen. There was, what floor is this on? Of like, it's it was like the penthouse, like the very, very top. So oh they own the top God. two floors. Um, there was two. So or, this is somebody's house, or they rented this? Space? No, they own it. But when Good I say God. they have money, they have money. Good. They had about now here's, two or three open bars. Here's the thing, too, is that like I enjoy throwing parties. Oh, absolutely. And so, like, if if I were to come into a lot of money or something, heck yeah. I'd oh be no, doing I would do that. And yeah. Nobody there flaunted or made me feel like that. Yeah. But it was one of those like I do not belong in this crowd. <laughs> I feel like it was one of those like I just had yeah. to like laugh and like try to blend in in my dark jeans while everyone's in tuxedos like, ha ha, rich great. jokes, yeah. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, this movie was it was interesting. It's thought provoking. Yeah, I, it's and good I like conversation. The acting is great. I like the conversations we've been having about it. And about, like in the um, end, they're they're all all of them, including me, Goth, and the group. They're all like all right, time to go. We'll see you. Have a good fly. And they're all getting on the plane. Mm -hmm. And you see Alex Skarsgård in the terminal by himself. Like everyone's left. He doesn't want to leave And then it fast forward back to the resort. He's just sitting there. It's the rainy season. So they're closed. And he's sitting there under an umbrella by himself in the rain. Do you think he'd be, do you think he'd get divorced if he went back? I was thinking about that. Like, I don't know that he would go back though. Why he like, no, I'm saying like, if he were to go back, he that that's one of the reasons he doesn't want to go back is that he doesn't like, want that life anymore. He doesn't want to go back to that life. He wants to continue to kill people. Like after he wants he, to live in after that... he like smashed that clone's head in. Good. The, the God. second the second clone that they bought of him. Yeah. Or maybe it's the same like, one as before. I don't know. Yeah, we were having conversations about that. It is may that be the, the same, same one, one that, he, that he beat up, or is that a new one? But there are three urns. So every time they kill a clone, they get an you urn. You get the urn. So he yeah, there's the three ones that they incinerated overall. Yeah. Um, and if the, I, the two clones were different clones, then that four. could mean it that, could that be more guy ones. on the beach was the clone. And maybe he did go back and the guy on the beach was his clone. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, they killed him off in the forest, too. So, like, did they actually take the body and, like, go and incinerate it? Or... Yeah. So, but I, I don't... If he did go back, I don't... Yeah, I don't know that he'd want to live that life anymore. I think he'd want to just live that free, But open... how much longer is he going to be able to do that? He's going to get cut off. He's going to get divorced and cut off. Well, no, but I guess he I think his friends... We'll just come back, or maybe yeah. his, his rich friends, or the waiting. ones that are just he, like, we'll take care of it. He's all. gonna wait it out and just wait for his friends to come back and pay for more clones for him to kill. Yeah, and live that. They're, Man. They are the they are the pool of friends that are the infinity yeah. pool because they just keep living and making more clones when things go yeah, bad. So I was, I think they just pulled a rand. I don't, I don't know if they did. Maybe I'm not smart enough to figure out why they named it Infinity Pool. That's my my but Infinity they, Pool for me is it's the pool of friends and they keep making it's clones be an and living. Loop of, it's an infinite loop. Yeah. That's the infinity pool. But infinity pool within the like the literal context of the movie was Mia Goth's boyfriend or husband or whoever it was was making was building an infinity pool uh, on a resort and like the I know I can hear the sorry dogs yeah, I can hear the dogs uh, was on the resort yeah. building a infinity a pool on the resort and it was a glass bottom one she was like it's a pervy glass bottom one uh, where people uh, can see into it and uh, a glass pane crushed two of the workers and that's how they found out about the cloning process yeah was through building an infinity pool but i yeah i think maybe that's it is maybe i'm reading too much into it no i don't don't know with this movie i don't think that exists i think the real infinity pool was the friends we made along the way (laughs) oh boy kind of what we're saying though like you're not far off um but yeah i so i think it, it has a lot of meaning a lot of things to unlock i wish it had more it's a very the... thought-provoking movie yeah but not um, one that's worth like i'm gonna watch it i'm not gonna go home and watch it on my own no i don't need to i would i'll watch some like uh youtubers uh talk a about breakthrough it or something or behind, yeah. i'll watch a behind the scenes thing or something yeah or like if if brandon cronenberg wants to come out and talk about it then yeah for sure uh, yeah like i would a listen to that in a documentary heartbeat. on it mm-hmm. 
It wasn't but, like scary. I mean, like it was scary. Like it was a people are scary. The things they'll do, and it was tense and like it's more gory. Yeah. It's not suspenseful, gory. Uh, like thriller than thriller than horror. Yeah. But horror, I put horror on the list of genres at the end, like suspenseful, gory, yeah, everything else, and then horrors at the end. But I think I think horror. Horror is all encompassing. It Maybe is. we it's need all to rename those. our podcast because scare. I think scary movie is very specific, and horror is like it can be a yeah. scary movie, but it. I mean, it's, but we've watched plenty of a, not scary movies. A stuff horror on movie doesn't necessarily have to be a scary movie. Oh yeah, we watched FDR oh, American yeah. Badass. FDR American That's, Badass <laughs> is not a horror not horror movie or scary, scary at all, but it had werewolves. Uh, but we had fun, and yeah, like Cocaine Bear worse. wouldn't be necessarily a horror movie. <sighs> But, but we want to review so that. So good, I loved it. I've seen it twice, I and we'll watch it. it again. I would see it again for sure. Go see Cocaine Bear. Hashtag not sponsored. Yeah, but could be Cocaine Bear. Cocaine Bear. Uh, this wait, one, which one's mine? Which one's is that one mine? Uh, hang on. Got it. Got wait, it. Got, got it. it yeah, got wait, it. Wait. Got it. That one. Cocaine Bear sponsor us. Hashtag sponsored. There we go. Um, <laughs> this one is worth watching with people just for the conversation that you'll have. But it's not one that is worth, like, investing in. Like, if it comes up and you're like, hey, we're going to watch Infinity Pool, sure. If I were to watch this with any other people than you, then you guys, I would be uncomfortable. Yeah, I don't know that I'd want to watch it with anyone <laughs> else. Especially if it was the uh, un- uncut the, one. The yeah. NC-17 one. I wouldn't yeah, have watched there it was some. Own. Would you have watched this one with Donna if she was here? No. Oh, that... <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine if y'all were like, let's go see it in theaters, and then you're both sitting there like... Well, sit next to my mom watching some um, borderline. One of, one of the most uncomfortable things I watched with my mother while she was still with us was the first scary movie. Oh yeah, because we. Th- I think she thought it was a scary movie, and it was the scene where the dude sticks his dick through the the glory hole in the toilet yep. and penetrates through his ear. And I remember sitting there, everyone's like laughing, and I'm sitting there, my mom's next to me, and I'm just like. I'm pretty sure I saw that <sighs> that movie in the theater with my parents and like friends. And we were all just cackling through that whole part. Oh, yeah. Um, I watched, I saw, um, I think I've, we've talked about this on the podcast before, too. But I saw American Pie uh, with yeah. with one of my friends at the time. His mom and my mom was there. So it was the four of us went to go see it. And, like, they, the moms wanted to go see it because they thought it would be funny. And we were, just happened to be there, That's too. Pretty, I, think, I think we were, like, 13 or 14 when that came out. That's so not, not too like, inappropriate, though. Not too inappropriate. And we I mean, were like, yeah. He fucks a pie. He it's, what? It's, oh. <laughs> Can you write that down? Yes. Oh, hey, okay, Aaron. <laughs> Was that the only one for this episode? No. Oh. Uh. <laughs> I mean, it's it's racy, but they don't. there's no like nudity and stuff like one, that. So at least that's the good okay. part of it. So what would you rate this movie? Circling back to that now. Um, On a scale of... Oh man, I had a weird mask. There he is. Two, oh, no, I lost him. You were off. Oh I crap! Sorry. Wow. Oh no. Oh, oh yeah, no. we didn't talk about the mask. They they have this like weird ritual that they're doing, and and that's the culture. And one of them is what is it? Te- tetrophobia. Oh, trypophobia. Yeah, where you have or a fear of like the holes. I think it's trypophobia. Whatever the yeah, one of the masks is that one. It's like a two face one. The two face one was cool. That, that was, was the cool. Only one I really liked. There's like the pig one with like this. I didn't. Twisty like skin horns. I get the 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 Cronenbergness of the masks. I didn't get why yeah. we needed them in the like why they had to look that way or why we had them in the movie in the first place. I don't place. know. I didn't something they were gross. something about the masks we put on to hide ourselves. And oh, but then they wore them in the gross. then they yeah, wore them in the know. orgy and that made it really uncomfortable. That was weird. Just to be creepy and weird. I'm glad it was uncomfortable though. <laughs> Yeah, honestly. Okay, um, so on a scale of masks. On a scale of weird, gross Cronenberg masks um, to a gutted clone, I'm going to give it five... Uh... Reach rounds? Nope, not that. <laughs> not that. <laughs> I'm going to give it uh, uh, five... Um, glass panes that fall off of an infinity pool. Okay. On a scale of Skarsgård clones to hmm, creepy kids that stab you an unnecessary amount of times, I'm going to give this movie just two maggots sucked from a nipple. Oh, that was weird. During the trippy... That was weird. Very trippy orgy scene. 
it ends with like a, a nipple, nipple that and then someone is longer a, and longer and a longer maggot comes out of it. Longer. I don't think it was a magnet. I think it's it was a mag- just getting... it's, No, it's something I looked up. It's meant oh. to be a maggot coming out of it. Not okay. Why? Because. Because well, movie. I get unlocking all the different things. I don't, I don't get the that. The maggot one. represents new birth and then being reborn after being cloned. Boom. That, Bro, might, that might be it. I was being that might actually that might be, be it. it. Yeah. I saw you BSing your way through that answer, and yeah. I was like, "No, that's it. Yeah. I think that's it." The maggot represents Croatian culture. <laughs> Is that rude? Is that racist? It's, it's I don't know. Xenophobic, at least. Speaking of xenophobia, <laughs> what is oh, the name lights. of the docile and domesticated zombie in Day of the Dead? Uh, Bub. Question two. What actor stars in the 1999 film Stir of Echoes in Kevin which Bacon. a man sees visions after being hypnotized? Kevin Bacon is correct. Good answer. Good answer, Kevin Bacon. That's a great film. Speaking of Kevin Bacon, that is a great film. did we all see the um, Guardians Christmas special? Oh, it's great. I loved it. So good. I'm excited for uh, part three. Oh, yeah. It's the last one, I think they're all going to die. No. They're going to kill off everybody. Star-Lord, Drax. Well, Drax could die. No. You're Drax. No, that's my dog. <laughs> no, we Don't love kill Drax. off my dog. We love Drax. We love Drax. We, we do. Him. Well, shall we wrap this mother up? Let's wrap it up because I'm looking forward to a... Uh, I'm hungry. A fun movie after this. I that, we're that actually, but I'm also hungry. Uh, oh, yeah, I could eat. I had some carrots. I could eat. Um, but I'm looking forward to watching a fun, weird movie movie i'm looking forward I'm to watching this movie good. too i know i don't normally sit i normally sit in a uh chair that i can't do this with this is i'm glad i'm more comfortable now that we're yeah. recording in here this has been nice you've got your greg next to you i do i got greggy and i got we got critters over here we've got some myers representation i like some trick oh, oh wait we just had a question for this trick archery trick archery not or and then, Arr. did you make this? Yes, that's one of my sculptures. Keegan made... Oh, it's way heavier than I was expecting. Oh, yeah, it. it's iron. <laughs> also, it's, like it's a little rusty. Oh, I'm going to get... Te- oh! <laughs> oh, when I say a little, I mean okay. it's rusty. Well, we're going to go wash the tetanus off of our hands. There you go, so I can hear But him. this has been another episode of... Keegan, Keegan and Carlos, the Scary, scary Movie Podcast. Podcast. With a side of tetanus. Hey, thanks for listening to us, everybody. Be sure to subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or whatever platform you're listening to us on. And follow us on Instagram and Facebook so you can make sure you keep up with all of our fun shenanigans. And if you have any suggestions for scary movies, let us know. Thanks Thanks for for listening listening to Keegan Keegan and Carlos's Scary Movie Podcast. Podcast.